Hey. Okay, so I want to do my update for day of my colonoscopy. So you can tell I'm a little relieved that it's over. Um, have more energy now because I've finally stuffed my face with delicious food again after not eating for uh, two days at least. Um, Alright, so let's get to it. Um, yesterday was the day of my scope and um, my husband tried to get me to even update you guys yesterday. He's a good supporter, but I was just so out of it from the meds and I'm still a little bit dizzy and kind of like... Ugh. So, I'll do my best today to update you guys, and if I forget stuff, I'll just do another one, I guess. So, yesterday I woke up at like 6.45 to get up and make my last Pico mixture cocktail. Um, I took that, and I just took it in bed, and, and then tried to drink a couple Gatorade, Powerade things, and then... Um, whatever, flushed out my system some more. I had to pee a lot. Like, that finally caught up with me, because at first, like, I didn't have to pee. It was all just poop. And then yesterday, it was a lot of peeing as well. So, I felt like every, like, five minutes I had to pee. Even, like, on the way. I had to keep stopping in the hospital, like, on different floors. Like, Dad, I gotta pee. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and just to clear up, like, I'm the only one in my family with Crohn's. My dad doesn't have Crohn's. That was a little bit confusing in my video yesterday. We do have a history of colon cancer, so he gets screened as a preventative measure, not because he has Crohn's. So there are, there are different reasons why you'll need a scope, and, and I hope lots of people watch these so that they know what to expect or what experiences are, what different people go through. So, um, around 10.30... My dad came and picked me up and we headed over to the hospital. Um, things that my tips to take, I took an extra pair of clothes like just in case there's any accidents because when you're traveling, like even our drive was only like 20 minutes, but you never know when you're taking strong laxatives if you'll have an accident or not. So I packed um, a change of clothes. So like I put pajama pants and an extra top, like a tank top in my bag. Um, I take fuzzy socks, like warm socks, because hospitals I'm always freezing, and when you're under, um, I don't know, I would pack socks, I actually was so thankful I had them, because as soon as I got admitted, I was freezing, so I took extra pair of socks, and then I always take um, a couple extra bottles of water, so I took one bottle of water and one Gatorade, um, and just wear comfy clothes, like I wore yoga pants, a tank top, and just like an over sweater. Um, so once you get there, you take a number, they'll register you, kind of go over everything. Here you need a responsible adult, my dad said, I don't know how responsible I am, but uh, a responsible adult who can drive you, and they have to stay in the building the whole time, just in case, I guess, and then they just wait in the waiting room. So you get there, you register, and then the nurse will come, and you'll change into a Johnny shirt and you get a robe. You get to leave on like your top clothing. You have to take off everything from the waist down. Um, and then you go through, well, depending on your hospital, I had to go through the big double doors. And before, like, my mom went with me to that part the first time I had them, but they don't encourage it. So um, I, put on, I was a big girl, and I guess I was calm, cool, and collected this time because I'm a seasoned veteran and went through those doors by myself and my dad waited back so you just wait in the waiting room until your name's called to get you prepped for it so you'll go and they do like a brief medical history so do you have any heart problems lung problems um glaucoma are you allergic to any drugs so since i am allergic to remicade i had to wear a red bracelet i finally just cut it off um this morning so you'll have your hospital bracelet and then a red bracelet if you're allergic to anything um uh, what else do they ask you? Nothing. Oh, if you're on any medications, you need to make sure you bring all those, the dosages, and how often you take them and everything. And, oh, I didn't know this either, but I was really nauseous from the Pico and not eating. You can take Gravol. I just am such a worrywart that I don't take anything. So you can take Gravol through your fasting and everything if you're super nauseous like I get. Um, yeah, so that's a tip. Take gravel. Um, then I got my IV, so I got it in my hand. 
because I have really bad veins. Like I said, I have a, a port. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's... That's where I had my IV. It is a little bit swollen. Not too bruised, but... And I was really happy because I didn't have to have a an IV like stick that I had to carry with me like usual. Because that's really annoying to do anything with. But I just put the shunt in my hand and then... Um, when I went into, so after you get your IV, I waited for my doctor, and then I went down, like, I could walk. They didn't use a gurney or anything for me. Oh, P.S. When I was in the waiting room, I was, like, the only person under 50, so <laughs> that was a little bit. Everyone was like, what is she doing in here? She's so young, and she has no one with her. So I was like, I'm a champ. I'm strong. I can do this. So... Just thought it was funny how everyone else was like 50 or 60 or 80, but it's okay, whatever. So then I walked down to the room, my doctor was there, and she had my special cocktail, as she called it. And I asked what it was that they give me, and it's fentanyl, so that's the extra drug that I get to put me to sleep. So um, you assume the position, which is lying on your left side, and they kind of pull up all your Johnny shirt and your house coat, like you get to leave that on. They pull that up under a blanket, so, like, you're not exposed until you're asleep, just to make it more comfortable, and, um, be prepared, though, like, the, you might go in and see the hose lying on the table, so you'll see, like, an ultrasound-looking, um, screen on one side that they would be looking at, and... You lie on your left side, and my doctor made me push over more, because she's like, I don't want you falling down, I don't want any lawsuits. So, you lie on your left side, and then she just pushed the drugs through my IV. She pushed one through, I don't know which order she gave them to me, and I said, well, it's cold, like, it's room temperature, but you can feel it going through your veins. And then she pushed the second one, and I remember saying, I'm a lot more calm than the first two times we did this, right? And she's like, yep, and then I don't remember anything after that. So I woke up in recovery, and my doctor came over, and she gave me um, my papers because I asked for pictures, and she was like, yeah, of course. And I was like, is that weird? And she's like, no, people ask for them. She's like, I had my husband's picture of his colon up on our fridge for a while. And the nurse was like, that is weird. Why would you do that? Like, because we're weird like that. So, once you become, like, used to medical stuff, you're like, whatever, it doesn't matter. So, I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes. So I have two more minutes. Um, and then I blank. So, I woke up in recovery, and I woke up actually from pain in my stomach. So, because they have to push your bowels full of air, all the air has to come out. And they do try to suck out the air, but like it naturally has to come out as well so I actually woke up a because I had to pee really bad because I got nervous before and I can't pee when I'm nervous and then two because of the pains in my stomach so you do have gas pains and the nurse were like don't be shy let it out or it's gonna hurt more but who is comfortable enough to like let gas pass when there's 10 other people lying in gurneys recovering and nurses and people like no so I tried to quietly anyway and then walking is the best thing to do if you have gas pains really bad so today they're kind of gone, but they're still kind of there. So expect a lot of gas pain, and the best thing to do is let it out. And sorry, my husband came in, and I'm like still not comfortable enough to do this in front of people. And that's why I was going to take videos in the hospital and stuff, but I'm still not to the point where I can have people watching me film because it's just weird. <laughs> so anyway... Um, I don't know what I was talking about. Probably recovery. Oh, and gas pains. Yeah, so you'll have gas pains. Um, and then I was actually surprised at how fast I woke up and I wanted to leave. Like, usually last time I just wanted to sleep, but this time I was like, okay, I'm awake. I want to leave. Like, get me out of here. So I asked the nurse, I'm like, can I leave? And she's like, yep. So they just check you and see how dizzy you are and take your IV out. Um... And then I just walked to meet my dad. They called, made sure you have someone there. Walk out. I got changed. We walked down, I was able to walk to the parking lot, and then we went out for supper, and I stuffed my face with, like, massive amounts of food. My husband was like, how, where are you putting this? Like, didn't your stomach shrink? But, I'm like, I haven't eaten in two days, like, I'm starving, so I ate a whole huge meal and then dessert. 
and then I came home and crashed. So I slept for about three hours and got up for a couple hours and then went back to bed. So today I'm just still nauseous and dizzy and kind of feel woozy and stuff so I'm gonna rest. We went out and did some errands just because I've been trapped to the house for a couple days needing to be by a bathroom but we went out and it's really sunny out today so get out like don't go shack wacky whoops. Um, so to finish this up um, if you have questions about other things in more detail or whatever it went well like I stayed asleep so there's not much to update other than that but I do have some pictures, so I left this for the last. So I'll read you what my um, summary was. So it says, uh, there is mild stenosis at the ileocecal junction and significant ulceration in the terminal ileum in keeping with active Crohn's and that she'll see me to discuss treatment options. So like I thought, it, it's not really a good what she found. Um, I had to look up what stenosis means, um, and it means that there, I have a narrowing in my bowel. So that's why I have so much pain lately, and I honestly thought over the last couple of months that I had an obstruction. So basically it's a narrow, narrowing obstruction in my bowel. So for food to pass, it doesn't matter what I eat, it hurts to pass through that little part. And I can feel it, and I can also always feel after I eat, um, when it's passing through my disease part, because it actually burns and hurts, and it doesn't feel nice, so if you have that, I know what you're feeling. So, that's my report, and she just didn't want to go into too much detail when I was in my drug state, so she's going to see me pretty soon to discuss it in detail, and then I'll be able to update you guys better, but that's my report, and then to end this video, I'm going to show you the gory details. So I asked for pictures and I'm going to share them with you. If you don't want to look, I would end the video now, but I'll update you guys again soon. So the other thing is that I did get my appointment for my surgery to get my port out. So I'm going to do a port video, but I'm getting that out next Friday. So two Fridays in the hospital doing invasive procedures. Hmm, get them over with. So I'm going to show you what a healthy bowel looks like. So if you don't want to look, look away, but it's just body parts. So let me try to do this. So here's a healthy bowel. So that's my healthy part. So you can see like there's no blood, there's no inflammation, it just looks normal. You can see veins, that's normal. There's that looks better. That looks like a narrow oh, maybe that's my narrowing. Okay. So it's not disease, but it's narrowing, so my disease might have spread or now I have more parts to it and then if you don't want to see this this is my disease so you can see that it's bleeding um, to the left side if you look closely you'll see like ulcers and inflammation and then blood and then here's another picture of another part so to the left hopefully or, I don't know if I'm doing this right um, like where the shiny part is across from the blood that's the bad parts and then it's bleeding and, and it's really sore so healthy versus not healthy and then that might be my narrowing but like I said I'll get more details I'm kind of just looking at this as a non-doctor and guessing but that looks like a narrowing and this looks like right here is is all the ulceration and then it bleeds too so that's why I get a little blood and sore. So that's what Crohn's disease looks like. Well, mine anyway. And it's really nice to be able to see what mine looks like. But anyway, I have to wrap this up so that this video actually loads and it doesn't say oh, video is too long, okay? So ask questions, share me your experiences. Was that gross? Was that too far? I don't know. It's, it is what it is, right? So I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to hear read some comments or questions. Have a great Saturday. Bye!